Wonderful. Well, I appreciate you all coming today. Um, I am doing this presentation both for my public health program through Boise State University and also for our benefit, just to go over some evidence-based fall prevention programs that are recommended by the CDC, the Department of Health, and the National Council for Aging. So it's, um, it's not gonna be a deep dive, but we'll cover a few of the, them and the basics of them. Did any of you have a chance? I saw a few responses for this kind of pre-presentation survey I sent out. Mm. And uh, just to get a quick read of the room, who all is familiar with either any of these three programs? We have the Tai Chi Guan, Stepping On, or um, Otago. I'm not familiar with any of them. Okay, great. That's I've awesome. read about each one of them. Okay. I, you know, I'm familiar with Tai Chi, but I don't know the difference between the Chai Chi Quan program and, you know, Tai Chi. So, oh, we'll talk and the other two I'm unfamiliar. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we will we'll cover uh, this sort of, that's what we'll be getting into today. So I'll just go ahead and start. And if there's any questions, um, just because I don't necessarily know that we'll have too much time uh, to cover everything, if you could just put it in the chat, I will get to questions when I can um, after, each, um, after each presentation about it, so. Um, Without further ado, let me share my screen. Okay. All right, can everyone see that well? Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So, Just to cover uh, the, some basic intro on falls and why they are such an important issue. I know most of us are very familiar with these, but I'll just cover it anyways. That falls are a leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries in older adults. And more than one out of four, some people say one out of three older adults falls every year. And yet less than half of these will report a fall to their doctor or to um, even family. Um, it just, it's just a social construct that we have in the US as well that people don't want others to know. And so it's a big issue, um, but not one fall doubles your chance of falling again. And so that, that even increases the risk there for adults who fall of losing their independence completely. So. We want to we want to stress that that the those ADLs really go down when you have a fall, and then also the big one is just that falls are preventable. It's not a normal part of the aging process. Even if some people would say, "Oh, it's just like that's going to happen to me," it really doesn't have to be this way. And uh, and so if you take action, and we just want to stress that taking those action and preventable things that people can do to lower their risk of falling will really keep them independent. Um, so that's a big, big thing. And 3 million older people are in the ER treated every year in the ER for injuries related to falls. And it, it's gone up a lot in the last um, 10 years from 2007 to 2016, falls increased 30% actually um, injury rates from falls. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting phenomenon and I, there's more to be looked into on that note, but I didn't get too far into that. So um, I'm gonna just cover a few of these risk factors that people can really address. Um, that's the lower body weakness, um, impaired balance, reduced muscle strength, 
mobility issues, medications, uh, as we know, are especially associated with this risk of falling, especially multiple medications at the same time. And then um, vitamin D deficiency, malnutrition, any visual impairment is associated with falling, improper footwear, ice, snow, and then the home hazards is a big category. People often fall at home. And we could do a whole other presentation on just the home, what needs to be addressed in homes, whether it's having a bar in the bathroom or putting a rail on the entryway, rugs, etc. A lot, but most of you are familiar with all of that. And then pets and improper use of mobility aids is also common. So. And so just emphasizing that individuals really do have the power to address these factors and reduce their risk, but we just need more awareness. And I think also, you know, you don't wanna make people <clears throat> afraid and paralyzed about this issue if they're already afraid of falling. But if they're not afraid of falling, which is sometimes the case also, it's good to let people know what those risks are so that they can take action and have the motivation for it. So um, there's a lot of <laughs> psychology behind how to help people to get there in terms of realizing the importance of of falls and preventing them. But um, these interventions really do make a difference and decrease that, uh, the risk. So um, I'm gonna play a quick video here for you on, um, which is by the National Council on Aging. And it, it goes over a few of these programs briefly just to introduce them. And then I'll get into them further. So I'll just play this for you. Everyone see that? We all know someone who has had a fall. We can't see it. Uh -oh. But one in four older okay. adults. We'll go back to stop share and share again. Okay, you should be able to see it now. There we go. Yep. Okay. Adults falls each year. The good news is that falling is not a normal part of aging. You have the power to prevent a fall. There are programs that are proven to reduce your chance of falling. They are fun and effective, and they can help you stay independent and active. Tai Chi looks like an exercise class, but it's so much more. The practice includes slow, low impact, and controlled movements and body positions. The move improve the parts of your body needed for increased balance, strength, and flexibility. And the practice teaches you awareness. A lot of these movements help memory, help cognition, help awareness of where we need to be in time and space so that people are more aware of where their foot is in relationship to a curb so they do not fall. I've always been so Tai Chi has offered me the opportunity to think more about what I'm doing, pay attention to what I'm doing, and uh, not fall. I'm able to catch myself if I trip over something because of Tai Chi. If you're still pretty steady on your feet, but you want to be proactive about preventing a fall, stepping on may be the class for you. The multi-week class is designed for people who live independently, but are worried about falls or have fallen in the past. I mean, I was up and then all of a sudden you're down and that had never happened to me before. You know, at 76 years of age, I think I know everything, but I found out that there are a lot of things I don't know. And by taking this course, I've learned some of the things that I can do without the risk of falling. 
after performing stepping on, your fall risk decreases because you're given an awareness of those factors that cause falls. You have exercises to strengthen your legs, improve your balance, and give you strategies to rise from the floor in case you do fall. A Matter of Balance is a group class that can help reduce your fear of falling and teaches the importance of activity so you can stay independent. The eight session class is for people who are concerned about falling and many of the exercises are practiced while sitting down. An older adult can start a Matter of Balance at any time, whether they're healthy or they have some disabling situations, the benefits of the matter of balance will help them not just through the exercises, but through the strategies that they learn to deal with decreasing their risk for falls. Yesterday, I went out to do the very activity that had made me aware of my need in the first place. And I did not feel as unsteady and as insecure as I had originally. I had a lot more confidence and I was able to take my steps confidently and I felt much more secure. So I just feel like it was very beneficial. We're gonna point and flex. Point, flex. It's never too late to take steps to prevent falls. The Otago exercise program is delivered by a physical therapist to older adults who aren't able to get around as well, but want to safe in their homes. You will learn exercises to help improve your strength and balance, either one-on-one -on -one or in a small class setting. To get started, the physical therapist will evaluate you and then design a tailored program of progressive exercises. I've been wanting to do exercise for a long time and it's very, very hard for me to do it by myself. And so I started participating in Otago and it has really changed my life. It's wonderful. Otago is very good for improving strength and improving balance. And with that, it has been shown to be very effective for reducing falls by about 35 to 40%. Most people within their first five or six visits within the first eight weeks will notice improvements in their balance. Okay. So that gives a uh, good intro to what I'm gonna be talking about as far as we, we went into matter of balance also, which was already covered, I think in our last meeting so that was just a little recap there. Um, but as far as um, just introducing people, as far as those few programs and how they're different, um, now we have our head there. And I'm going to start with Tai Chi Guan, Moving for Better Balance. Can everyone see that again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops, it went back. Perfect. Okay. It's also called Tai Chi. I'm not really sure why. And maybe it was formerly Tai Chi and now it's this specific program. They're calling it Tai Chi Guan, Moving for Better Balance. Um, but it was, um, it was developed from the martial art into a more simplified form for this purpose of this program by a man named Fu Hong Li. Um, at the Oregon Research Institute. And he created this regimen, kind of taking elements of it, but simplifying it. And it's, um, it's called the Simplified 24 Form Tai Chi Guan. Um, some of the more complex practices can involve, I think 40 or more even um, different forms. So it's, this one is more simplified and there's like an eight core that is often practiced and then they can vary it. So it's just an interesting um, simplification for the purpose of the program. Um, but the program's designed for two 60 minute sessions per week for uh, at least 24 weeks, but some go a lot longer. Um, and it's definitely focused on improving balance, strength and mobility 
um, and, and the target population is for people with falls at high risk or balance disorders. And interestingly enough, it's also very effective for people with Parkinson's disease too. Um, so that's an interesting bonus on this one. Um, but these movements um, focus on postural stability, mindful control of your body positioning. There's a lot of range of motion in your hip and ankle joints. Um, walking, they focus on how to walk um, and then just increasing your lower body strength. So um, then the statistics are pretty big for, for Tai Chi Guan. The research has shown that it reduces falls by 55 to 58% in those adults who are living in communities already and not in a, in a um, assisted living facility or something. Um, and it, uh, it not only affects their balance and strength, but I think they touched on this in the video also that because it has this meditation aspect to it, it can really help people with memory and visuospatial abilities, just things that they are integrating um, in this practice that have been noticeable for people. So I think that's kind of a neat aspect of this one that it's you know, less of a conventional exercise approach. Um, it's just something to consider. So, um, and any, any questions on this particular, oh, I've got, I think I have one more slide in terms of the practical um, ways that it can be implemented. There's um, a $200 license fee that's annually used for the program, but this is this pretty simple really to implement Tai Chi Guan program. Um, the Department of Health actually offers scholarships for it, and it can be um, it can be for the two day training for the instructor that can be covered, um, especially if there that person is an individual who's involved in a community organization that has a plan to implement this program. I looked over the materials for applying for that scholarship, and it looks like it's a pretty simple process for through the Department of Health for that one. Um, and otherwise it's $375 for the instructor course. Um, and then there's multiple other levels that the instructor could go on to complete, you know, other certifications. I think there's levels you could go level one, two, and, and continue on. So, but just to begin a chapter it's not a very long or expensive process. Mm -hmm. And uh, it includes the videos and a teaching plan. And honestly, the materials are really simple as well. You don't need exercise equipment even, you just need safe chairs that won't slip and the space. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of a plus on this one. Um, and oh, and then the class size, they recommend eight, to 15 participants per class. So you can have a pretty big group um, too, which uh, I guess maybe because of COVID isn't always ideal unless you are outside or in a well-ventilated area. But yeah, questions, Jan? Is, I imagine this is also being held on Zoom. Is that right? Or do you know about That's that? That's right. It often is held on Zoom as well. Uh -huh. And um, they teach you in the instructor training how to modify your class for a Zoom class. Uh -huh. huh. so I think that's definitely an option. Um, as far as Met How at Home members, I, I'm not sure how, um, you know, we could get into the weeds on that as far as how members would enjoy whether they would like to attend a Zoom exercise class or prefer mm -hmm. one in person, I don't. A Abby, are you going to compare and contrast sale with these? Because I really don't know what they do in sale real specifically or for, I, for a later time. I can't, yeah, I, I can't speak too much <laughs> to sale on this one. 
Yeah. Um, but actually, I'm sure others, Tracy, maybe could talk a little bit about sale as well. Um, if we want to talk about sale, maybe at the end, too. Maybe yeah, I, I only, you know, unfortunately, I haven't gone through the sale training yet, or an, and I also haven't had a sale class, but it's very much a very prescribed set of warm-ups, get the heart up, you know, the walking, there's just, there's a very prescribed thing that takes one hour that is sale and um so it's more it's more balance strengthening cardio mm -hmm. that area thing well this is more intentional movement consciousness of you know where you're placing your body movement in space that type of thing yeah yeah i think that that's a very interesting piece of this and you know the other thing with like tai chi or qigong both you have that kind of horse stance where you're holding holding it and um so that definitely does build that lower body strength whereas a little bit different in in the sale but teresa remsberg has been trained in both and she was very um impressed with the tai chi kwan oh she is training yeah and she felt like there's room for this in in our valley as well so oh good yeah and yeah you know, um i just wanted to uh, I, as a side note um the students the ups students that worked on the binder resource mm -hmm. binder for all of you um the first page has the program comparison chart right which if you needed like a modifiable version so you could add the sale program to that comparison chart that might be something that we could arrange for. Um, Cause I see that matter of balance and capable of stepping on and the, the Tai Chi Guan is on there for on the comparison chart already. Great. Great. Yeah, we'll have to pull that up. A really good resource that we forget to use as much as <laughs> we should be. Grab that I out. mean, they even have funding options under the Tai Chi Kwan right. as, yeah. as with the scholarship. Um, they, they note that the Washington Department Department of Health scholarship re reduces the cost to one hundred and seventy five dollars. So um, it seems like a really good yeah. resource. Well, the 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 um, how you know, the, how effective it is is very impressive. Right, 62, 50, 52 to fifty eight percent decrease is that, significant. That's, that's really significant. That's yeah. significant. Yeah, I don't know of another one that is. Well, anyway, I won't mm -hmm. keep talking until the end. But yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Otherwise, I will start with uh, the next program. Okay. Oh, there's a few contacts that I put, and I'll send this to everyone. To, that might be on um, the UPS students, um, other contacts for presentation too, but um, for this program. Um, okay, and then, so Stepping On is a community-based fall prevention program that's also one of those evidence-based recommended programs by the CDC. And let me get it to go. So it was developed in Sydney, Australia, actually, and uh, then adopted by the Wisconsin Institute for Healthy Aging. And they brought the program to the US chapter and started um, spreading it among the different, uh, several states actually now use it, but it's, it is more expensive than some of the programs, but it can also have a different effect. And so, um, yeah, I'll just, I'll get into that bit later, but it's designed for older adults who are living at home and have experienced a fall or are concerned about falls. And so there's a lot of conversation, um, peer learning, guest speakers, um, to talk people through their fears about falling um, and the research around how to be safe. Um, and it's, the structure is a seven week workshop two hours each and it includes a lot of different 
um, aspects in each of those. So they vary what the topic is, what the purpose of each session is varies. Um, so it, some of it is exercise and balance exercises. Some of it's conversations about how to manage your medications or talk to your doctor about multiple medications around and falls where um, they talk about problems that you might experience in the home and how to mitigate those, as well as community hazards like our boardwalks <laughs> um, and things like that. Um, they cover in different sessions. And so those guest speakers could vary based off of what community you're living in and who you find to be those people. But um, and yeah, one note is it's not recommended for people with memory problems or who are completely um, dependent on a walking frame or unable to support their weight um, independently. Um, so that's actually better for Otago. Um, and it's also not been well researched. It's not shown success in helping people with Parkinson's disease. So. Um, but it and its percentage is a bit lower than Tai Chi Guan. It's 31% um, reduction in falls. But it, again, it addresses the fear of falling more so than other programs do. It really helps people increase their confidence. And this program's uh, implementation is um, by license. So the Wisconsin Institute for Aging will grant a license um, to either a sole um, group or a, it could be a multiple affiliate association that sort of collaborates to offer programming. And the prices do vary. It goes up to like $5,000 if uh, I think beyond three in the affiliates. Um, so it just, it just varies a little bit and they give a pretty good contact um, for that to discuss pricing and fees. So I imagine they could give you a full breakdown if you wanted to do it with another organization and partner how you could um, split the costs and that um, could, be, could be further explained. So, um, and I guess as far as leader training, you can go to the Wisconsin Institute for Aging for in-person training, or they can potentially come out and conduct on-site training as well. Um, and they will give you all kinds of tools and resources upon training um, and your license to you know, coach people, have continuing ed classes, um, regular communication with them and with their trainers and conference calls, workshop materials, all kinds of helpful resources. And then one benefit of stepping on is that it's also covered by Medicare Advantage. Mm. Uh, Otago is as well. So it's just a um, one factor to consider is that I, I don't know if um, Tai Chi Guan wasn't on the list, but it is one of those evidence-based programs that there's funding available for. So if it's not readily available, I think there's probably ways to, it's just that it's a class that people often don't charge for necessarily through a medical institution where stepping on is definitely mm. it's possible to be covered so you mean like the the, the fees that would be associated with attending the class with kind of like what they do with the fitness classes or the, the... right yeah. yeah and then there's some contacts for reaching out into the Wisconsin Healthy Aging Organization. Um, and then the Otago Exercise Program is also um, one of the evidence-based programs that was brought to the US. It, it originated in New Zealand actually, and it's a muscle strength and balance retraining program for people that are already um, struggling with balance typically. And um, it's led by a physical therapist or multiple physical therapists sometimes lead groups together. So it could be an interesting option as something that a PT clinic could get behind because 
they're already trained for this. So if they wanted to help implement it, they would become trained in Otago and then you, you would adopt the program and it could be outside of the PT clinic as well, but run by PTs who are trained in it. And so the components are strength, balance, and walking. And what they incorporate are focused on these three components. They have different tests that they perform at different periods and they tailor the program for each patient basically who is tested originally in each category. And then they develop a program for them focusing on ways they can improve in each category. And then they slowly get them to the next level, test again, and, and so on. So you'd think it sounds very um, time consuming and it is, but it's also very patient centered. So it's this one is interesting because it's really up to the patient or the client um, who gets to decide how often they do these, but they have someone who's coaching and helping them and I, I imagine that that helps with the motivation aspect when somebody's really walking them through it. Um, so it, it is delivered at home, though. They're not necessarily, they don't have to come to the PT clinic if they don't want to. And also the PT doesn't need to go to their home each month. They could also call on the phone and check in. But the, the program uh, requires that the PT at least have seven home visits as well as a monthly phone call when there isn't a home visit over the course of a year. So that's what the, hmm. the requirements are. And it was tested in randomized control um, trials with 1,016 men and women aged 65 to 97 that participated. And it was statistically significant. They didn't give a percentage, but the amount of fall um, reduction was, it was significant. It was men and women benefited equally. And I thought it was interesting. It was definitely most effective for adults 80 years and older. Hmm. Um, so this one is really helpful, I think, for those people who are already struggling. Um, further down the line with balance and strength and they're not necessarily able to do everything they used to be able to do or you know they're not they're not like your 65 year old who just wants to prevent themselves from losing strength and balance this one is particularly helpful for those people who are feeling mm. insecure about their balance and strength and might want to regain some or if they've already had a fall. Um, and it is it is very useful after a year that they're experiencing more strength and balance than they had. So, um, yeah. and then the training and materials and costs for this one, the physical therapists typically have the skills already needed to teach Otago, um, but th there is a three hour class that's required for $50 and the PT or multiple PTs would learn how to integrate Otago as a part of their practice mm -hmm. or as a, a program that fits in with what they're doing. I don't know how they would, depending on the organization, what they would decide to do. Um, but it is, um, they'll teach you how to run the program as well. Um, and PTs can estimate eight to 10 hours per patient for the entire program. Um, so it's not crazy intensive if you're thinking a year and you have, um, you know, how many people you have that sign up for it, um, but it's significant. So it's something to consider how to implement. And this one's also covered by Medicare A or B or Medicare Advantage. There you go. Um, yeah, so as far as what was new information for all of you, was there any questions or things of note that you 
had on your mind? One of the things that that for me is is is, is the more I hear about these different programs, the more um, I can see one fit one where you know one does not fit all one program doesn't fit everyone's need and we have such a diversity of individuals and where they are in that fall cycle or preventing that fall cycle or preventative type work that each one of these it doesn't I mean that's what I'm struck by the sale program isn't going to work with everyone the matter of balance isn't going to work with everyone and if you look at frail elderly you look at a different program so I think that will be an important discussion for us to have is who are we really trying to target um, in the valley? Mm -hmm. And really, really think, yeah, because the sale is definitely targeting a certain group, but what about the individuals that are in their 80s, 90s that have never done any preventative work they really were not exercises, then what do you do? Because those are, you know, those are the frail ones that are probably going to be leaving their homes sooner than the others, if in fact that spiral starts. So um, that's what I'm struck by, Abby. So that's an opening, you know, awareness for me to be able to see the difference in, in, in the programs and, and, and going back and saying, what do we have? Well, who's the most important population? Yeah, I and and also maybe how what is our breakdown of the population? Right. How many people do we have that are in that you mm -hmm. know, category that would need more tailored care, for example, versus people who are still able to do a lot of preventative work? Mm -hmm. so it's a really mm -hmm. good point to find out. Yeah, because I think the folks with home health they're seeing the high risk folks. You know, they're seeing the people that have, um, the, at least when I worked at home, it was older individuals that are very, you know, getting more fragile and you were just trying to get in there to help a bit. But anyway. I think that, you know, the Tai Chi really struck me as just because it's so effective and also, um, I think that awareness is such a huge piece and mm -hmm. can be helpful on so many different levels. So that one's kind of rising to the top of like, oh, how can I, t you know, it makes me want to go talk to Teresa. And I was just kind of envisioning like a Tai Chi class there at Jamie's place, what that would be like. Yeah. And because yeah how can we help to get more activities happening in Jamie's place um I think that's just would be so helpful Lisa do you know if like Apple Springs offers these kinds of classes at all uh, I think they do have a sale class going on but it might just be for residents yeah, yeah, singing just for the residents, but. And what about at Jamie's place? So right now we have um, a couple ladies who come in and do an exercise class twice a week. Um, and that's usually for about um, a half hour in each home. And they really just focus on stretching and movement um, and that kind of thing. And everyone mm -hmm. really seems to like it. So I think something like this would go over really well. I think it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. It's, hard, it's hard to ignore Tai Chi Kwan's 55% number mm -hmm. as yeah. well as just how cost effective and simple it would be to right. start. But, but I don't know if you're that really, um, everyone was standing. It's true. <laughs> and, it's you know, you're, you're not, you're, you don't have the folks that are like barely moving around and, you know, that, that, that the other side of the other end of the spectrum, which is the more fragile. Yeah. 
And I definitely think everything can be modified, right? Yeah, you that's know? what I was about to say. There are some sitting modifications. Yes. Oh, there are. Okay. There are. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I just pulled this comp oh, Amy. comparison up and right. it says that there's armless chairs. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like it can be modified for people in sitting. It can. Yeah. And I wonder if this program comparison chart might be useful to sort of add on um, the other ones mm -hmm. that you're talking about, maybe the sale program and um, what else? Otago. Otago is is only physical therapy run. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. seems like a limitation. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. depending, depending on what the plan is going forward. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just cut and pasted the program comparison from, from the student document so that it's on its own. Um, but it's something that could be easily modifiable. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. I mean, I think matter of balance and stepping on both are seem kind of similar and I'm just, I feel like matter of balance would be more attainable for us here than the stepping on because we have Aaron Cass already poised and ready to mm -hmm. help us get it here. And the neat thing with matter of balance as opposed to some of the other things is it has that um, retraining, you know, retraining of the mind, which I think is, and behavior, addressing behavior, and also that fear of falling, which is so huge in trying to um, just help to avert people's lack of activity that then is part of the big spiral. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you're right. It's going to take multiple. It's good to go over what what all is out there. Mm -hmm. At least, and be aware of it. So. Yeah, I've been curious about Otago, and um, so that was interesting to hear that. That's really just a PT based program. Yeah. Which, I mean, we shouldn't totally overlook if the PT clinic wanted to implement something as part of their business. They certainly, mm -hmm. did, and now they have this resource of, um, you know, at least a little extra knowledge about it. So. But. Especially because it's Medicare, you know, they can bill. Mm -hmm. They can bill for that. So, which is an issue with some things. Yeah. Um, so any other uh, questions or thoughts? I don't know if we have, we don't have a plan for a next meeting or anything, but this was sort of a, yeah, off the calendar thing. So thanks for coming. Well, this has been really great. Abby, thank you for putting together the information and um, really helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it just furthers some of the work that the students have been doing and um, reminds, reminding us. So. Lisa, um, the aging and adult, adult care, do you all sponsor any kinds of classes at all? Or it's, it's more home. Oh, go ahead. No. Oh, I think we have a, we contract with sales somehow, but I'm not exactly sure how we do that. Mm. I just know we uh -huh. don't have it in Okanagan County <laughs> for this office anyway. Right. 
Yeah, it would be. Do you know what's um, happening over there in OMAC or Okanagan? Or I know there's a lot of sale. There's a lot of sale. Like there's sale in Tenasket and. Mm. Yep, there's sale up at the Tenasket Senior Center, and um, somebody was offering to do trainings up there but I couldn't get any people that were willing to do it to make it worth their time. And mm -hmm. um, that's it. Mm. I think they have like a keeping off the pounds at the OMAC Senior Center and it's a small exercise program, but I'm not very familiar with that one. And um, yeah, I don't think anything else is really going on at the Senior Centers other than just those two. Mm. Well, and we, we don't have sale at our Senior Center any longer, do we? No. The no, the sale, the Arrow Met How does sale at the Grange. Right. Okay. And so doing place. it right now. Isn't that, I thought it was off. Well, she wasn't for a minute, but now they're back. Oh, they're okay. back doing great. I know, I mean, this is a big thing. The COVID is a huge thing. That's really been challenging, so. Um, um, I have, Jesse, oh, go ahead, Tracy. I'm just wondering if your folks coming in to do the exercise classes, are they masking up right now or? <clears throat> so what we're doing is if they're inside, we are masking up and if they go outside, we are not. Uh huh. So, so as long as they're outside, we don't need to wear the masks. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. That's one nice thing about the Tai Chi is you can do it outside. Mm. Yeah, anything outside yeah. right now would be wonderful. Mm. Yeah. I guess you'd have to start a little earlier before it gets really hot right now. But they they do start the exercise class usually about 10, try and get it before it gets too hot. Lisa? Yeah. Can I ask you a couple of questions about your the senior centers that you, I know you don't oversee them, but you're aware of what programs that are going on in this region, which there's, how many senior centers are there in Oak Park, Oregon County? Oh, there's so, there's the Met Howe, Oroville, Tenasket, Omac, Okanagan, and Brewster, so six. Six, okay. Do they collaborate at all with one another on different programmings? No, they don't think they really have much connection to each other. The OMAC and Okanagan Senior Center do just because our towns are so close right. and so many people go to both of them. Yeah. But not so much on planning to do stuff together. They're just aware of what the other's doing. Okay. Well, I've just seen an, what an opportunity um, for them to benefit from some of these in a organized, um, deliberate way. Um, I wish we had more bandwidth to help out, <laughs> but yeah. it's just like, oh, yeah, because I'm thinking when I go into the senior center here in Twist, that is, that's the population I see that it's probably pretty high risk, many of them, and they are also the individuals that pro may not be um, joining Metau at home. Um, they seem to there's a group that seems to go to senior centers that, you know, it's a little different. So the um, senior centers are a hub for a demographic, it seems. Um, so, and I don't know who gets to deal with that, but Tracy, we don't have bandwidth. I'm sorry, to even bring it up. <laughs> no, well, I go sit, you know, sit down at the table uh -huh. once a month or with room one and yeah but yeah who knows well, we should we should be including a senior center in our discussions that's yes uh, absolutely absolutely and, and i have approached them and attempted to get them to sit down but it's been really difficult for you know variety of reasons but um i should probably put some more effort into that because um yeah mm -hmm. I think that's a yeah. missed opportunity for us to involve a part of the community that's not, could be well served. 
Absolutely. Lisa, do you have any thoughts about any of that? As far as no, I think it'd be awesome to have a senior center join. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really have any thoughts. I'm sorry. Okay, you know, <laughs> it's the end of a long day. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, it's a long day. I'm sure. Hopefully. Amy, any thoughts from you? I guess. Um, you know, just as a community, as we try to design a, a more collaborative approach to fall prevention within our community, what kinds of questions we should be asking ourselves or? Um, there's, there's, there's a big difference or there's a big disparity in the cost of the programs. Um, so not knowing what your operating budget is, uh, I, I would imagine that, that the cost of these programs would play into your decision maybe at some point, but I think it's a really um, intentional way of exploring both the needs of the community and, and, and the research on these different programs. So um, I appreciate the process. Uh, I guess, I mean, I think as you were asking me the question, I was entering into, I was entering the Otago uh, considerations onto this table um, because like Abby said, um, just because the, um, having PTs only um, administer this program, it does that might be a limitation, but there's also another side to that where um, PTs can get reimbursed for that work. Um, so I, I appreciate you guys um, having these discussions. And I do think it's a really good idea to include the senior center if you can. Um, I don't know how to uh, move the needle on that invitation. Um, Sometimes if you have a, a, a member of your community in the Metau at home uh, who, who utilizes a senior center, sometimes that can be a good way to approach or get someone mm -hmm. to be interested. Um, yeah. So I, I think you're asking the right kinds of questions. I think it's, I think what's really important is that there's so much evidence, there's so much strong evidence that mm -hmm. uh, falls are preventable and that's really exciting so it'll be super exciting to see which direction you take yeah thanks mm -hmm. thank you well our next um so I guess this isn't really a task force meeting. I, I, I did, um, you guys got the email that I'm, I'm attempting to move aside to allow somebody else to move into this leadership role of the task force. Um, and I have yet to locate that individual. In the meantime, um, I capable is the, the, the professor, a couple of professors from, from John Hopkins agreed to present the capable program to us in September um, because due to fall prevention month, they thought it was good timing um, to do that. So they're on board for that in September. So um, that may be our next meeting um, to get the group together, see who continues to want to participate. So, yeah. Great. Do you have a date for that yet, Jan? No, I'm waiting. They, um, I contacted them a couple of weeks ago and one of the presenters was out of town until this week. Um, so then they were gonna get back to me as far as potential dates. And they agreed that, that September would be good. Um, so I don't, but I'll get that out and, and hopefully everyone can attend. And in addition to that, Tracy and I have discussed more um, um, presentations that are gonna be held in September and October. Um, that include the, one of the physiatrists from um, um, Confluence in, in um, Wenatchee is going to be presenting on, on fall prevention. 
Um, we also have, what else do we have, Tracy? <laughs> as far as, oh, we have Aaron. We have Aaron, we have Heidi, one Aaron but. Heidi Blackie is an OT and she's been doing fall prevention programs in Seattle at different senior centers. So she's gonna also do one and uh, and that's to the men, yeah. right? She's presenting. Meta at home. No, I mean it's all of our stuff is open to everyone. But hers is more. I just meant it's sort of tailored for people who might not be familiar with fall prevention at all. Yeah, it's not to the professional crowd. Is that, is that what you right, mean? right, right? Nice. Yeah, Jan's talking about our get ready. So this is yeah, not. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh no, I just I must have missed what you were where you were going at. <laughs> well, I probably didn't make sense. So happy. <laughs> yeah. No, these are these are get ready programs for the community around yeah. fall yeah. prevention. So, because yeah, September October we're focusing in on that in terms of um, in terms of our get ready programming. So. Yeah, okay. and Lisa, thank you. You always help us out by getting word out on the our education programs. I'm so grateful for that. Thanks. I know I wanted to get an email out today about the heat, and I didn't quite make it, but I really appreciated your Friday email as well. And I'm definitely going to move some of those resources um, out. So anyway, anything else, Abby? Nothing else for me. Thank you all so much for coming and participating in this discussion. And um, yeah, I, I appreciate Amy for that chart. Um, I yeah, can send that's... out my presentation and any other, I have a few other resources in the email also, so. Yeah, I can, should I just send it to, to you all through an email attachment? So we do have it on the drive, right? We do have it on a, the Google Drive. Yes. I, what I noticed is that it's not modifiable, that chart, the, the one that I showed you. So I add, on the second page, I added some columns so that you can add on to it. Oh. Perfect. So, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, if I email it to you, you could probably put it, or I, I, or I could ask the students if they have a modifiable version also. Okay. Um, they must have just yeah, that's great. If you don't mind emailing it. I think that's great. Okay. Sounds that's good. Cool. Thank you. Nice to Abby, see you all. Yeah, thank you. Abby, thanks for taking us another step. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for all the information. Yeah. That was really yeah. Cool. Really valuable. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Hey, Tracy. Yeah. Oh, is everyone else gone? Yep. Okay. <laughs> How are you? <ya>? Good. <laughs> Good. Hey, you know yeah. what? <laughs> Good. I'm glad. She did a really good job. That was that was nice. That was very good. Yeah, she had to do it for her class, and you know, use it for anything else. Well, I'm gonna just I'm gonna send it out to the task force. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay. Well, I need to call Justin this week. Um, kind of rattle his cage a little bit and see where he is with the ownership and moving in that direction and i will do that i'll send him an email today okay um yeah. do you by chance have the number for durable medical equipment the dme uh boy not here i don't believe do you have somebody requesting it i bet if yes. you I, I bet if you called the um Aerometro, they have it at their desk. Uh, but yeah. on the other hand, I don't know if they're class if they're open. I don't know what their status is. I know. But that would be I nice. Know. Yeah, that's a um, yeah. You want me to ask him? Um, I I'll look it up. Okay. Okay. Let me see. 
I think I think that I have those notes because I feel like the first meeting the number was on one of Justin's slides. I thought it was too. Yeah. Let right. me see. If I, can find and that. I, have, I think in my notebook at home with this the the fall prevention notebook, I have that info. Yes. I know. It's um. It's Hunter's wife's. <laughs> she's she's implementing it. It's at his Who house. is it? Hunter at Hunter's house. Did you know that? What? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, thanks, Hunter. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Wonder, do you remember what day that was? Like, it was probably, it was June. Maybe it was May. Yeah. But again, I don't, I haven't seen any advertisement. I have not seen any kickoff. I haven't seen anything about it. So um, yeah. I don't really know. And I don't know if home health knows about it or, or any of those things. So, yeah. Um, I'm going to be back at the end of the week. And, um, I, I was just thinking about maybe getting a note out to the task force once we know that when the um, capable program, when they're going to do the presentation, and then also outline some things that we're going to be doing from Meta at home as far as the September, you know, the brochure, uh -huh. you know, so maybe people will want to collaborate with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. I am like, I don't know where that thing is. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, that sounds good. And I know you talked to Justin. I'm just, I'm just wondering if he really truly has the bandwidth. He's so busy. He said he didn't. I'm, he said he didn't. He said, Jan, I don't. And I said, I hear. He said, but I have money. He has or. Yeah. So that's what he said last week. What are you thinking? I just don't want it to fall apart. You know, I don't want the effort to fall apart. So no, but no. we could condense down to a smaller, tighter group. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Well, um, I think we're also, we've really less left our, um, um, what our role is kind of out there in the open too. We haven't completed that with Aaron. Yeah, that needs to be wrapped up. With Aaron? Not with Aaron, but. Um, Kelly. Kelly, yeah, Kelly. Uh-huh. So we got partially finished. Um, let me talk to, yeah. let me see if I can get a hold of Justin and then um, see what he says and, and pick up the ball again, if um, at least partially. I think okay. nothing else, if we could just, if we could get the brochure of local resources, mm -hmm. get that accomplished in a small group, you know, and also, um, Gosh, I mean, we're Medhow at Home is already trying to get the sale classes going, so that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, but I do think that also adding Tai Chi mm -hmm. would be great. I think that would be awesome. I think it adds a different layer. It looks at really quite a different area that is not being offered here in the valley. I agree. And the neat thing is, is that we could get a pretty simple space in Winthrop. Okay. Because one thing is that Winthrop doesn't, the, the sale is happening more focused in TWISP. And then if we could get Tai Chi happening in Winthrop, that'd be super. Well, I worst, um, yeah. I agree. So, it'd be nice. It was driven by the PT clinic. It was something they could they could drive. You know, the problem with that is that it's just expensive. Oh, it's sure. expensive, oh, and they've got, 
to join. Yeah. They want any instructor instructor through them, you know, that's so it's just trickier yeah. to make it accessible. And so I think, but it's like, we could probably look into seeing if the um, Sierra space, for example, could be used or Sierra, who Sierra's naturopath. Sierra, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does she have a big space? Yeah, that center space at her office often gets utilized. Because oh, the nice, yeah, I mean, it would be a small group, but, and then I'm wondering, like, about the library. Maybe they have a room that could be utilized. Right now, I go in the library, it's so toxic smelling to me. I'm like, <sighs> but. Well, they, they you know, they, when last time I talked to them to try to get a meeting space, they were still waiting for the, town of Winthrop to come up with protocol and they hadn't got there yet so who knows but you're right I think that that's a um, that's a good next step um, yeah just in that's pretty I think as long as we have somebody that's interested in, in leading it you know I know well we can just put it out and see mm -hmm. see what happens if we decide like Yes, we want to go that direction. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece is, I think, eventually putting into place matter of balance, you know, because I think that having that group and can do a lot for moving the cultural needle and moving away from the stigma of falling and helping people to, you know, do some adjustments in their... What did Aaron say about neuro patterning? Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right. I actually have to go. So, so I was Is this your boat, Dan? Yeah. Do you have a boat? It's Don's boat, my boat, our boat. Yeah. Wow. Where do you keep it moored? For Townsend. Really handy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what kind of boat is it? I grew up on sailboats. Yeah, it's an island packet. They're out of Florida. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's had it for 20 years, I think. Yeah. Different so, than an islander. Yeah. Island. It's a, it's a nice boat for, it's actually, it's really seaworthy. Um, uh huh. It's, um, yeah, it's very comfortable. Yeah. So, anyway, it's beautiful out here. I've forgotten. It's been a while. Oh. It's so glorious. I was just on Lopez. Oh, you were, huh? Yeah. Whoopsie. We, I just we, had a when, when when are we getting the ED position out? The 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 um the ED um when is that coming out or did I miss it? Oh, it's out. The job description. Yeah, it's out. Oh. Okay, I said look. Yeah. I said Yeah. That. I sent it to Amy, the, the announcement. So the job description is out. Okay. So Whoa! Maybe I, Amy. I know. That's what Jim said. He said, would you? I said, of course I'll do this. Yeah, I know. Wouldn't that be cool? She might not be able to take a cut and pay like that, but who knows? I know she's tired of academia. She told me that. She's not real fond of it. Oh, my gosh. That would be so amazing. Yeah. So who sent it out? Okay. Did Barb, did Barb send it out? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will. It's in multiple places. Yeah. It's in multiple places. It's on the website. Okay. Mm hmm. And you can just open it up and then send it to her. Okay. Send her the link or. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, good I to see you. Her. <laughs> yeah. You too. Okay. I'll catch you later. Yeah. Bye bye. Happy sailing. Yeah. Bye bye. Ha, <laughs>